This meeting is being recorded. So can you guys see my screen? Okay, great. So um, I'm gonna talk about system of care and how that's family focused and empowered and how that actually by being family focused it empowers our youth, so our, our families and our youth. So a system of care is a spectrum of effective community-based services and supports for children and youth with, with or at risk for mental health or other challenges and their families. And it's organized into a coordinated network that builds meaningful partnerships with families and youth. And it addresses their cultural and linguistic needs in order to help them function better at home and school and in the community and actually throughout life. And that's the definition from my friends, um, uh, Beth Stroll and Gary Blau um, from a long time ago, 2010. And it's really my, my favorite definition, honestly. Um, I think it's just really a, a good um, a good look at, at what a system of care should be and how it should operate. So when we talk about um, core values for a system of care, we're really talking about family driven and youth guided with the strengths and the needs of the child and the family determining the types and the mixes of services and supports that are provided. So again, that's empowering the family um, it's very focused on the family and it's driven by the family. And family driven means that, um, sorry, I've got some things blocking me here. So family driven means that families have a primary decision making role in the care of their own children, as well as the policies and procedures that govern care for all children. And not just in their community, but in their state, their tribe, their territory, their nation, you know, at the local level, the state level, the federal level, at, at every level. And so this would include choosing culturally and linguistically competent supports, services, and providers, choice, setting goals. Um, goals aren't set for them. They're included in helping to set the goals and figure out what goals they need. Uh, designing and implementing and, inv and evaluating programs monitoring outcomes and partnering in funding decisions. And those last couple of bullet points are often where I see us kind of falling short that we're not including parents in that in those areas. And youth guided means that the young people have the right to be empowered, educated, and given a decision-making role in the care of their own lives, as well as the policies and procedures that govern the care of all youth in the community, the state, and the nation. And this includes giving young people a sustainable voice and then listening to that voice. And further, a youth-guided approach recognizes that there's a continuum of power that should be shared with young people based on their understanding and maturity in a strength-based change process. And this is uh, the definition that also comes out of some of that same work. And it is the definition that Youth Move Ohio and our National Youth Move use for what Youth Guided means. So we're really talking about a shifting of the power. So the power doesn't no longer lies with the professionals working with the families. The power is given to the families, to the youth. And that shift of power brings about so much change. Um, I often try to tell people that when you give up your own power, you're actually getting more power because you really now have the power to help this family make change. So, and that's what we want. So shift the power. Uh, some of the core values for systems of care are that they're community-based with the locus of services, as well as the system management resting within a supportive, adaptive infrastructure of structures, processes, and relationships at the community level. So it's in the community. Keeping our kids there is the best that we can do for them when we can. Uh, they're the core values are that it's culturally and linguistically competent. And with agencies, programs, services that reflect the cultural, racial, ethnic, and linguistic differences of the populations they serve to facilitate access to and the utilization of appropriate services and supports. Big words, big, big ideas. But you know, 
I had to stop and think when I was putting this PowerPoint together, what does being culturally and linguistically competent actually mean? You know, we all get, get training on diversity and equality and all those kind of things. And we know the importance of recognizing certain things. And when we're working with people and that people want to do uh, work with people that look like them, but what does it actually mean to be competent? So I found these five, um, these five thoughts about what it actually means to be competent. So you not only do you acknowledge cultural differences, which I think we all probably can do that, um, we understand our own culture. So getting in touch with what our own culture is and what our own culture is about. We engage in self-assessment. We acquire cultural knowledge and skills. So not just about our own culture, but about all cultures. Um, we view behavior within a cultural context. And I think that some of those ideas are things that I had in my mind, but I, I don't know that I actually put them in words or it was strategic at, at, with all of these points. So I would encourage all of us to become competent when we're talking about cultural and linguistic competency. So the guiding, the guiding principles of system of care um, is to ensure the availability of and the access to a broad, flexible array of effective, evidence-informed, community-based services and supports for children and their families that address their physical, emotional, social, and educational needs, including traditional and non-traditional services, as well as informal and natural supports. So really, it's thinking outside of the box and doing whatever it takes, but making sure, first of all, that it's available and that there's access to those services. The second guiding principle is to provide individualized services in accordance with the unique potential and needs of each child and family, guided by a strength-based wraparound service planning process and an individualized service plan developed in true partnership with the child and family. Again, there's that word, that partnership that um, was mentioned in the beginning when we were talking about the definition. You know, partnership is, again, sharing that power. It's coming together, making decisions together. It's, it's giving people, you know, valuing them for what they're bringing and recognizing them as the expert. And it, it's gonna go a long way if you can do that for families. The third guiding principle is that to deliver services and supports within the least restrictive, the most normative environments that are clinically appropriate. I don't know if you've ever seen these little birds when I was looking for some um, graphics, but I just love them. Um, it's through thesaurus. Um, what's the opposite of restrictive? So, you know, we're talking about in the least restrictive. So what is the opposite of that? Well, it would be unrestrictive. It would be free. It would be emancipative. I love that word, emancipative. It would be non-restrictive. So that's really what we're talking about. Something that's free and emancipative to the people that are involved. If that's not a shift of power, I don't know what is. Um, <laughs> guiding principles number four is that Ensure that the families and other caregivers and the youth are full partners, again, that word partners, in all aspects of the planning and delivery of their own services and in the policies and procedures that govern care for all children and youth in their communities, states, territories, tribes, and nations, again, everywhere. Um, it's really, really empowering. I can speak for myself that when you start getting power in what's happening in your own life with your own child, and then you start advocating for others, um, you really feel like you're 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 making a difference. That some of what you the 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 things that you've learned that you're putting them to use and that you're, you're sharing your expertise and you're empowering those that are coming along behind you. And I kind of see myself as, you know, lifting other people up to stand with me to, you know, talk about what we need as families, what, what youth need. The fifth principle is to ensure cross system collaboration with linkages between child serving agencies and programs across administrative and funding boundaries and mechanisms for system level management coordination and integrated care management. If that isn't a business kind of um, 
saying, I don't know what is, but it, it is about collaboration. It's how do we make this all work together for good? And um, sometimes we do need the professionals involved to help us with that because we as parents don't understand all the administrative and the, the funding boundaries and all of those pieces and parts. We just know what we think we need and, and what, what we would like to see for our families. And then, you know, the other professionals can come in and collaborate with us and with each other to make all of this stuff happen. And that is one of the guiding principles of system of care. Providing care management or similar mechanisms to ensure that multiple services are delivered in a coordinated and therapeutic manner, and that children and their families can move through the system of services in accordance with their changing needs. You know, hopefully we, as families, we're not in the same spot that we were when we start. So as our needs change and grow, um, or diminish, so do the services. And again, here are my, my favorite birds. You know, what are other words for coordinated? Matching, unified, matched, interconnected, concerted, coordinated, organized, compatible, integrated, united. I encourage you guys to check out these birds at the thesaurus.plus and, and see if, they, if you could use them in some of your um, everyday life actually, but it, it, I'm, I'm sorry that you have to see this through a bunch of PowerPoint pieces, but I'm, I'm really in love with these birds. I had no idea I love birds so much. Um, guiding principles of system of care number seven is to provide developmentally appropriate mental health services and supports that promote optimal social and emotional outcomes for young children and their families in their homes and in community settings. And some of what that um, might look like is, you know, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, responsible decision-making, the future self. You know, those are some really optimal social and emotional outcomes that we'd like to see for our kids, for our families, for ourselves. Providing developmentally appropriate services and supports to facilitate the transition of youth to adulthood and to the adult service system is needed. This is an area where we still struggle with that transition from the kids system to the adult system. And you know, we need to make sure that we kind of shore that up and help families navigate through that. To incorporate or link with mental health promotion, prevention, and early identification and intervention to improve the long-term outcomes, including mechanisms to identify problems at an earlier stage and mental health promotion and prevention activities that are directed at all children. So, you know, a lot of that prevention stuff um, might, might, might prevent some of this ha happening, but as early as we can, let's get some intervention going to help kids figure out what they need to be successful in school, in their communities, in their homes. Number 10 says that it, to incorporate a continuous accountability measure to track, monitor, and manage the achievement of system of care goals, fidelity to the system of care philosophy, and quality effectiveness and outcomes at the system level, at the practice level, and at the child and family level. So, I really see this as no excuses. There have to be accountability measures and we should be involved in that as the family. And certainly when we bring up something that's not working the way it's intended for us, there needs to be accountability. And families often talk about feeling like that's an area that's lacking. So how do we shore up that, those accountability measures? Um, tracking, monitoring, um, looking at those outcomes at all levels. Protect the rights of children, of youth and families and promote effective advocacy efforts. And you know, all of us are advocates for the, the families and the kids that we work with, not just those of us that actually have that title as part of our, part of our job. Just, um, but you know, how, do you, how do you do that? What does that look like to protect them? You know, sometimes it's about speaking up to somebody else who's saying something that they shouldn't be. Sometimes it's, you know, just letting the family know that you are there and you've got their back. But there are ways to incorporate this to make it a system of care piece where families can be can be who they are and know that you that you you've got them, that they're safe. 
provides services and supports without regard to race, religion, national origin, gender, gender expression, sexual orientation, physical disability, socio socioeconomic status, geography, language, immigration status, or other characteristics. Services should be sensitive and responsive to these differences. And there are a lot of them. And I think the list gets longer every year. So let's just make sure that we're respectful. We, most of us know what that looks like and what we want to see for ourselves. And how do we give that to the families that we're work, working with? And most importantly, how do we make sure that that's what our families feel? Because, you know, if our perspective is that you're not being respectful to us, it doesn't matter if you say you are or that you think you are. So how do we do it in a way that's meaningful to the family and to the youth that we're working with? So just a reminder that a, a system of care is, is a spectrum of effective community-based services and supports for children and youth who have or are at risk for mental health or other challenges and their families, and it's organized into a coordinated network. Um, it builds meaningful partnerships with families and youth and addresses their cultural and linguistic needs in order to help them function better at home, in school, in the community, and throughout life. So everyone has a role to play in this and what can you do to improve our system of care? And what can you do to improve the lives of the families and the youth that you serve? I hope that you'll seriously look at this and maybe jot down a few notes um, this week about you know, what your role is in this and, and what you can do to make a difference. And I'm sure, many of you are making a difference every day and maybe just acknowledging that for yourself and celebrating what you are doing that's right. I, I, I applaud you for that. And I invite you to partner with me to change our system one family at a time. Thank you.